Welcome to the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining this week are Rhys James, Tiff Stevenson, and Ed Gamble, Nish Kumar, Hugh Dennis, and Angela Barnes. We start tonight with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topic image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> is this from an airline safety video to tell you how not to put on an oxygen mask? <laughs> I think she looks so happy because she knows Africa's the one place she definitely won't run into Boris Johnson. <laughs> My favourite thing is the person just to the right of her who was thinking, how did they colonise us? <laughs> Just three more of these and I'll be able to have sex with Philip. <laughs> <laughs> she, looks like, she looks like she's about to do a rendition of the Gloria Gaynor classic, I Won't Survive. <laughs> is, is the special relationship now so bad that that is her direct line to Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> this, Theresa May goes to Africa to investigate a promising email from my Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> move to go to a country where you played quite a big part in the slave trade and wear a chain on your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do know Angela had no part yeah. in the slave trade. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do it, it wasn't me. <laughs> Judging by everyone's reaction in the background, is this Theresa May doing her stand-up routine in which she roasts blue hats? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it actually is? Of course we do, we've yeah. just been joking. Yeah. <laughs> Doing this. <laughs> well, we have to dance our dance, you and I here. Let us not like we don't. That <laughs> is the current Prime Minister. Yes. So she's in Kenya and she's doing a trade deal. With, I... We're going to give them uh, marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> and they give us uh, top class athletes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hugh. <laughs> Yes, this is Prime Minister Theresa May on a recent visit to Kenya. <laughs> this week, her so-called Chequers plan for Brexit, which was agreed in July, has been attacked by her own MPs and by the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, who was particularly scathing about May's Brexit plan. Was it by any chance <laughs> Boris Johnson? In by a... any crazy <laughs> chance? He's basically pushing to take Theresa May's job at this point. As in he actually. can be PM. Who would do... see how difficult it is to be PM and go, yeah, I want that job? It's like watching One Born Every Minute and immediately trying for a kid. <laughs> and also, it's, I mean, why is he communicating with Theresa May through telegraph columns? Like, has he not got a mobile phone? Next week, is it going to be a column saying, sorry, I missed your call, Theresa, I was on the tube? <laughs> Two words for you, Angela. White people. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you guys love to chat. You can't ever explain your feelings unless it's in the form of a telegraph column. <laughs> I've seen things. If Nish was a little dull where you pulled the string, the catchphrase would be, white people. <laughs> Regret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. If the Conservatives were a family, they'd have a social worker by now. <laughs> <laughs> do you think if it was the Irish leaving the European Union, it would be a much quicker thing? Because you could do the Irish goodbye. You just sort of leave without saying anything and then text <laughs> Michelle Barnier saying, gone home too pissed. <laughs> I'm offended. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm that's, that's the Irish goodbye. You know, yeah, that's the Irish goodbye. No, it's leaving, go, going, oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to the toilet, and then you just get a cab without saying goodbye, and then. Weirdly, the Norwegians do do that, in, but they'll just turn around mid sentence and go, and go. Uh, no, 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 no. They just didn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> That is a phrase I've heard, like, the Irish goodbyes leave it quickly, whereas now a British goodbye is when you leave a party but you don't leave and instead you shit yourself and then shout at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's always been a British goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this is your fault! The British goodbye presumably is that you announce you're leaving and then, <laughs> yeah. oh, they're still here! <laughs> <laughs> the exit no longer makes sense in Brexit. It should be called Brover staying our welcome. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it, 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 the weird thing about him, though, for strange, is like he's. It doesn't matter how. Somebody keeps giving him more chances, though. They, uh, is that like, Wiley Coyote? It's very strange. <laughs> he did the foreign secretary, and no one, I think, would justify saying that he was a very good foreign secretary. And so he left, and we went, fine, you're gone. And then the telegraph, like some weird regeneration point in a video game, <laughs> bumps his health back up again. <laughs> <laughs> and he's back, like somebody you cannot kill well, in Fortnite. Well, uh, and... you are obsessed with Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> 
Fortnite. <laughs> no, I would he not is. stop playing Fortnite. Don't ever stop Dora, playing Fortnite. I Trust me, if you've got Reese telling you to grow up, that is worrying. <laughs> <laughs> And that, I have not had 30 minutes. <laughs> Do you want to know why Boris keeps getting chances again? Yep. Thomas drink you. <laughs> <laughs> White people! <laughs> Was it Barnier was critical as well, though? About you, it? Barnier was, yes, yeah, yeah. He said uh, that we couldn't go round, like British people couldn't go cherry picking what they wanted. And I thought that's ironic, because if we don't get a deal, that's exactly what we will be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Barnier, whose yeah. criticism is probably more salient uh, in this yeah. situation than Boris's, also not happy. The, um, uh, we're I not think... looking at the, the real important thing, which they announced last week, is that if we don't secure a deal, there's going to be a sperm shortage. And that is... Not in I, my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a checkers, either. There's plenty of wankers in there. But the point is... We should just really like we should just go full in on Michelle Barnier now and just show him what it's going to be like in post-Brexit Britain and only refer to him as Michael Barnes for the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, Mickey Barnes. Mickey Barnes. <laughs> Barno, awesome. Barno, Bazo, Michael Bazo. <laughs> Mickey B! Uh, Mickey B! Mickey B! Mickey B! Mickey B! Got a point in Mickey B! We're going to take these uh, negotiations more seriously. <laughs> oh, Mickey B! Mickey B! Mickey B! <laughs> Yes. Yo, Mickey B, give us some sperm. <laughs> <laughs> the deadline's quite soon, though. It is coming up. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it is oh, yeah, very soon. On. That is worth stressing. The yeah, deadline yeah. is pretty soon. If university uh, deadlines have taught me anything, Theresa May is about to claim that her granddad died again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ten weeks away, isn't it, the deadline? I said, to mate, you know what, if yeah. I was her, I'd stay in Africa and have a career as a dancer. That's what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like a home county's librarian in a Zumba class for the first time. <laughs> you know, shimmy your way out of messing up Brexit, love. Like, I, I don't... The only idea is that she was dancing to distract people from the mess. <laughs> <laughs> if I just dance, then they won't spot what's happening. Uh, <laughs> get the engine running, <laughs> Philip! Yeah. Uh, but, sorry, you... You must admit, it wasn't just people making fun of an older person dancing. She's a really weird dancer. Yeah. It's, she looked like one of the mops in Fantasia. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, listen. This is where she was in Africa last week, and, and, and many people commented on this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's stop watching that now. <laughs> Yeah. Hugh, do me a favour. You know what to do. <gasps> White people! <laughs> I'm actually just copying everything those kids were doing. Do you think we could get them to negotiate a trade deal? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's in a bit of a no-win situation there. Cos she danced and everyone made fun of her bad dancing. People would be really annoyed if she was good at dancing. <laughs> like, she should have been running the country, not pulling off a flawless body pop. <laughs> If the phrase is dance like no one's watching, not dance like a marionette puppet being controlled by someone being attacked by a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, why has Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn been under pressure? He's been involved in an anti Semitism round. Oh, but, God, but, really? But, is that new? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, think right. it is, I think it is unfair. You know, to expect Jeremy Corbyn to sort out anti Semitism or have a coherent strategy on Brexit. Because it is harvest time on his allotment. <laughs> <laughs> and, on, and on top of all that, he's just caught his cock in his zip. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about it is that if you tweet anything about, you know, critical of the way Labour's handled the anti Semitism case, which uh, there's plenty to talk about with that, they've, they've made a real. They've really handled it poorly. But if you tweet anything about it, you get people online replying going, look, there's no problem with anti-Semitism. You've just bought into a conspiracy by the Rothschilds and George Soros. And you're like, I mean, that is exactly... <laughs> <you've> just... <laughs> what you basically just said there is, there's no problem with anti-Semitism. You've just been tricked by some lying Jews. <laughs> <laughs> can I just quickly can... say, can I just quickly say, I'd really appreciate that if no one edited that out of context. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately... Followed it, followed up with you saying, white what? people... <laughs> it's a real shame when, when Hugh pulls a string on your back and in the edit you go, lying Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh 
remember when we we were on here talking about how boring and quaint Jeremy Corbyn was? Yeah. Like someone's taken him aside and gone, listen, your, your image is a bit boring, maybe try and have a little bit of edge, and he has just run with that to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I go, so, Jeremy, we sort of meant get a motorbike, not get embroiled in an anti-Semitism debate. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a, a couple, isn't it? Because Labour were looking like they were doing well, they'd settled their differences, and it's like a new couple, we, like, it's all going well, and then suddenly he asks if he can wee on her feet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's what he's doing oh. in the picture. <laughs> oh. Angela, that was alarmingly specific. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, my feet are the softest in the business. <laughs> oh, no. What, uh, which business? Uh, <laughs> We the, really tackle the hard issues. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is bizarre, though, because it's been rolling along for months and months. Oh. You're going, surely this is not difficult to settle. Surely... And th they've said, like, it was only in the, this week that they've actually taken on board the 11 recommendations yeah. by the Holocaust Centre that these are the definitions that you should go with. Those. You go, wow, you've dragged this out. You know, there is a whole thing going... The rest of us are going to worry about Brexit while you're doing this mad <laughs> world. <laughs> and then the Tories have a problem with, with Muslims as well. This apparently it's going to be Tories going to probably be Muslim. What? Like, you know, are we going to find the SNP hate Rastafarians? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and the Lib Dems are bad on the Buddhists. And the DUP? Oh, wait, no, the DUP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back in line, the points go to Andrew Hewitt-Mish. <laughs> now we play a round called Jewish You Hadn't Said That. <laughs> This game involves Angela and Reese, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first thing we do is exercise. OK, well, um, I, I'm fairly new to the exercise game. I tried it once a few years ago. I got myself a, a personal trainer. I don't know if you've ever had one of those psychopaths in your life. <laughs> And the first thing she said to me was, so, Angela, tell me, what is your current exercise regime? <laughs> if I had one of those, I wouldn't need you, love, would I? <laughs> also, I don't like your use of the word regime. It makes it sound like my body's some sort of communist state. <laughs> it isn't. It's just a state. Now, sort it out. <laughs> to my first fitness class. My friend took me to a fitness class. I was very nervous going in, cos I'm not a gym person, you know, and I thought it was going to be full of people all pumped up gym bunnies and I'd look out of place, you know, and I walked in and I was delighted to find it was full of other overweight, middle-aged women. And then three seconds later, I thought, well, it don't work then, does it? <laughs> it's like going to AA and they're all pissed. <laughs> I did it and I loved it, right? And I love my fitness classes now. I do two or three a week. My favourite is one called Body Pump, uh, which is brilliant. It's a weightlifting class, cos it's all... But it's also very good for the core, cos you spend an hour trying to keep a fart in. <laughs> <laughs> no, recently, recently, my boyfriend, he's an ultra-marathon runner, right? We're very different. And, um, <laughs> he said to me recently, he said, you should try running, right? When I stopped laughing, he said, no, honestly, there's this app you can download. It's called Couch to 5K. So it takes someone like you who's never run before and it shows you how you can run 5K in nine weeks. I was like, you cheeky bastard, even I can run 5K in nine weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves it with Reese. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is family. There I am. <laughs> Really close to my family, really close. Growing up, my mum always used to say, if you masturbate too much, you go blind. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say to a child, isn't it? That's what she used to say. If you masturbate too much, you go blind. And then one week ago, she asked me to drive her to get laser eye surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The other thing she'd say was, oh, so if Dan jumped off a cliff, you'd do that as well, would you? I was like, yes, mum, what don't you understand about a suicide pact? <laughs> My grandma as well, way too sassy at the moment, way too sassy, my grandma. She keeps banging on about how much better it was in her day. Constantly, always. Went to the cinema recently, right? First time I've been to the cinema since Orange Wednesday's collapsed. Big day. <laughs> I've been saving up for a long time. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna treat my grandma. Cos, like, she's got meerkat movies, so still two for one. And... <laughs> and we went to see a film called Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, 
I don't know if you've seen it, but if you haven't, you must. Way to make a classic even more classic. <laughs> Perfect film to see with the grammar. It combines popular things from different eras. You know, like what's popular in 2018? Zombies. What was popular in 1918? Pride, sure. Prejudice, just a bit. <laughs> so it's marrying together our favourite parts. She hated it, though. We left the cinema, she was whinging. She's good. Oh, it was so much better in my day. Everything was so much better in my day. And listen, we all know that's not true. Does no one else find that kind of rude? To brag to me about a time period I will never get to experience because I was not alive at the time. I don't go and visit her, sit her down, looking at 84 your old face and go, the future is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Robots bring us breakfast and racism dies out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done, both of you. Points for the Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Tiff, which category would you like? Oh, uh, could I have world news, please? OK, your category is world news, and the answer is 12 miles. What is the question? Is it under the terms of my restraining order how close I'm allowed to Ryan Gosling? <laughs> <laughs> is it how far away from my house am I willing to say, here's fine, thanks, mate, when my taxi driver brings up immigration? <laughs> <laughs> is it when Jeremy Corbyn says some of his close friends are Jewish, what does he mean by close? <laughs> Is it, if you shave off all your pubes and lay them out end to end, how far must you remain from schools at all times? <laughs> also, what do you mean, all your pubes? <laughs> there are three, and they have names. <laughs> <laughs> and they're Ed, Dara and Hugh. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the middle chair again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're still captain on my pubes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the radius around Nigel Farage's house beyond which he considers you foreign? <laughs> How much of HS2 will ever be built? <laughs> Is it if I put a pedometer on a teenage boy's wrist, how far will it say he's walked in a day? <laughs> Reese? Don't look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> mm, you know, you know. I bought my grandparents a TV to watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> if I bought all the things being offered to me in spam emails, how big would my dick be? <laughs> how deep would a Thai football team go for their coach? <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> okay. How, how long is God's dick? <laughs> Uh, didn't have the correct answer. Yes. It's a fishing question, isn't it? it it's uh, how far off the French coast did British and French fishermen start fighting? Absolutely right. Thank you very much. Hugh! <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was how far off the coast of France have French and British fishermen clashed? This is the news that a war over scallops has broken out between <laughs> fishermen from the two countries. What has happened? It's being called the Scallop War, which also sounds like the worst instalment to the Call of Duty series. <laughs> <laughs> scallop War scallop sounds war. like the sort of show Dara hosts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get your scallops ready! <laughs> when I first heard that the French were attacking us because of scallops, I assumed we must be cooking them wrong. <laughs> it does sound like the poshest food fight ever, doesn't it? It starts off as an oyster kerfuffle. <laughs> Onto a langoustine skirmish and ends up in a scallop war. <laughs> Do you know what, though? If it's not quickly resolved, there is going to be a small gap in Waitrose's seafood section <laughs> between crayfish tails and the langoustine. Yeah. I'm not prepared to put up with that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very much a comedian of the people, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I think people realise what a terrible hors d'oeuvre shortage this could lead to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not that upset because I'm allergic to them. To the French? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am violently sick when I have them, so I literally can't keep them down. It's like when I eat breakfast, then switch on Good Morning Britain. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as I see peers. That would win us the scallop war. You just put you on a boat and then you pop one in your mouth and just spray the French. <laughs> <laughs> the, the French boats were throwing stones. We're throwing they? stones. That's a cheeky thing. That, that, are they, where did they get the stones? Well, uh, <laughs> and all the British visual good throwback were scallops. Uh, <laughs> They, try, they are trying to negotiate, but it's very difficult because each side thinks the other one is talking scallops. <laughs> <laughs> that was a carry-on joke from 1964. <laughs> 
scallops or scallops? I think it's scallops, but then I shop at Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> How did the Kuwaiti fishmonger get into trouble this week? The yeah. Kuwaiti fishmonger who has yeah. stuck googly eyes on his fish <laughs> so that they look fresher. Yes. And by fresher, he presumably means like they've just emerged from the bowels of hell. Yeah. <laughs> this is how the fish appeared to... <laughs> <laughs> Birthday I know, but actually, actually, you know, it, it, if you tap the googly eye, yeah. Oh! It's not... <laughs> There's no new story which isn't improved by putting googly eyes in their stuff. <laughs> Nothing in the world isn't better by wanted posters. Put googly eyes, googly eyes on it. It doesn't work. I tried it after I ran over my niece's dog and she didn't fall for it. <laughs> I've not ever bought a fish because I got lost in its eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it's, it's supposedly a sign of uh, freshness, how the eyes, the the, eyes deteriorate. It's quickly. the equivalent of him going, ooh, it's such a fresh fish. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, which financial organisation ran into trouble recently? This is presumably Wonga. It's Wonga, But I yes. do feel weird about describing Wonga as a financial organisation. <laughs> yeah. I just feel a bit like calling Greg's a patisserie. <laughs> <laughs> It's a name, it's a name that sounds ridiculous and silly, like it's, it's not built to last. Like a good solid financial name like Lehman or AIG. <laughs> uh, Northern Rock. Northern Rock. Yeah. Yeah. I feel sorry hmm. for them, they'd already lost their chocolate factory. <laughs> Such a different version of that film. Willy Wonga and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> you find a, you find a, oh, I found a golden ticket. Oh, I've got to repay this. Yes. <laughs> They're screwed, aren't they? Basically, they've gone into administration. If only they'd taken out some PPI. To <laughs> <laughs> no, be off. fair, Wonga helped me buy my new car. They did, because I put a hundred quid bet on them going under this year. <laughs> <laughs> The reason they had the old people as the puppets is because they wanted to make it seem like, oh, it's just your grandma lending you some money. My grandma has never gone, oh, here's a tenner, don't tell your mum. And I've gone, why not? And she's gone, because if you don't give me 20 grand in a week, I'll break your fucking leg. <laughs> 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 I think in that round, you probably should have Ed Tiffany. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read it this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Rejected exam questions. If Tony is 35 and Jane leaves him after a seven-year relationship, why did she waste the best years of his life? <laughs> This is a picture of Napoleon Bonaparte. Which part of Napoleon's boner is it? <laughs> Biology. What happens when you stand on an upturned plug? Three marks. <laughs> if a bus leaves London at 7am, how far will it get before Boris Johnson writes a lie on the side of it? <laughs> Open your biology question books where you will find an image of the male sexual reproductive organ. Mr. Tyler keeps doing that, that's why we've had to let him go. <laughs> why is Piers Morgan? <laughs> if an apple a day keeps a normal doctor away, how many apples would you have needed to defeat Harold Shipman? <laughs> Translate the following into German. Hello, I'm a British refugee. Please, can I live in your country? <laughs> if I mix two parts ethanol with one Whitney Houston CD, will I get over my ex? <laughs> this is your PE practical exam. For 30 marks, bully that little pale boy until he has to become a comedian. <laughs> Maths. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> and that concludes your French oral. Just pop your trousers up and I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Identify the white powder. Good, isn't it? 30 grand a kilo. <laughs> 
All right, you muppets. If 8x minus y equals 12, then what's 3x over 4y? I'm Danny Dyer, and welcome to Britain's hardest exams. <laughs> Fresh is Dara, really. <laughs> what, what, what do you think? What, 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 what? <laughs> what is the value of pi if you've just seen the bloke at Greg's pick it up off the floor? <laughs> <laughs> if a train leaves a station and it's operated by Southern Rail. <laughs> 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 ah. So, you just turned 16, did you? All right. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines from kids' film and TV shows. To me! <laughs> yes, Piglet, I know you've been playing with poo in the woods cos you stink and it's all over your hands. <laughs> The brave little toaster's owner was about to take him on his wildest adventure yet, all the way to the brave little bath. <laughs> said Pingu. <laughs> Sorry, said his mother. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> This is Blue Peter, and I think we can all agree we should have taken him to a hospital by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's the Teletubbies, or as they're otherwise known, the Fat Family from Gogglebox. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine was happy. He joined Thameslink and hadn't had to do anything for over a month. <laughs> with 11 fingers and 12 toes. Yes, it's the Inbredibles. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out Flowerpot Men is no longer politically correct and they will be henceforth known as Bill and Ben, the gays. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, something's wrong with Woody. I just keep pulling the string on his back and he keeps going, white people! <laughs> <laughs> Next, in the night garden. Can you stop calling it that? It really puts me off. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fu Panda, the least racist hero of all time, as he is black and white and Asian. <laughs> <laughs> E.T. send nudes. <laughs> Look. Bagpuss has been updated. Now he's Dyson Bagless Puss. <laughs> <laughs> but Quasimodo, what makes you think you need to see a back doctor? Uh, I have a hunch. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is I'm pregnant. The good news is I've learned the aborter spell. <laughs> No, I'm Willy Wonga. Ten grand or I take your piano. <laughs> Robin, do you know if Alfred has a charger for an iPhone 8? <laughs> the Adventures of Low Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what is Peter Rabbit doing in the garden? Mummy was sure she left him in her bedroom drawer. <laughs> SpongeBob went to the crab shack and met up with all his spongy mates, and they could all agree that contraceptive sponge had had the worst day. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Paw Patrol, Rocky gets hit by a car and the driver has to finish him off with a rolled-up A to Z. <laughs> <laughs> and the end of that round, the point's going to Andrew here and there. 
That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Reese James, Tiff Stevenson, and Ed Gamble. Congratulations to Mish Kumar, Hugh Dennis, and Angela Byrne. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night.